George Trapp driving down the middle. Chamberlain Fife, what's that out of bounds? He is awesome. Malone passes, deflected, going to be stolen, I think, by the doctor. Yes, he's got it. He carry counts. Ray rock the baby to sleep and slam dunk. All right, here's Dennis. Gets it in the bird. Larry, a runner. Got it! Ball game's over. Boston wins. Off the Leonard, defended by Simmons. Is this the tagger? This is WHPC Sports Talk. Welcome sports fans, it's another Thursday, the Thursday edition of WHPC Sports Talk on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Hope everyone's having a good day, it's a little, a little brick outside, but very brick, very hopefully brick. We, we warm y'all up with our uh, our sports knowledge and opinions. I don't know how that made sense, but uh, I am Josh Imahi as your host, joined by Antonio Gonzalez. How are we doing? Hello, I'm doing great, I'm doing great. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. All right, nice, nice, nice. Yeah, so it's a two minute show today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just you and I, me. I'm like everybody just goes to this. Rock the I, house. I, I don't know. I don't I'm know. very confused about what's going on. I know yeah. Braden was not going to come today apparently, but I don't know why Nico's not here. Yeah, I'm co- confused by it. Let's let's do a quick investigation <laughs> because yeah, Braden told us. Braden said he last was, he's week on a plane or something. Yeah, he's yeah. not even on the on the on the lands right now. Yeah, in, so in all right, there's there's one there's one. Mauricio texted me like nah. Mauricio, I'm right there. I forgot yeah, about him. I'm yeah, listening yeah, yeah. He he t- he texted me. Um, Nico did text me an hour before. Uh, an hour before? Yeah, when did Mauricio text before. you? He gave me... When did who text me? Mauricio. He texted me like, uh, I want to say 12 o'clock. Yeah. Damn. I know. But he didn't put in the chat. He, he texted me directly. I, I don't wow. know. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone did. Everyone did yeah, direct text. I, I, I guess. I they guess didn't want so. Sean to know about it. <laughs> they didn't want Sean to know about it. I guess it. You so. know now. They didn't want to disappoint a uh, good old, good old Novat. Oh, but man. It's a two-man show. You can join the show as well at 516-572-7440. That's the number to join. Let's get right into it. We're going to start with Please the, join. We need you. Yeah, we need you today. We need you today. <laughs> Let's get started with the Brooklyn Nets. So, you know, it it, it wasn't hyped up as a big game because obviously you have the injuries yeah. with uh, Kevin Durant. And, but uh, no one thought this would happen. Nah. This has been much. I mean, you saw the Celtics just barely beat the Lakers on a... Uh, not even a not even a fair game, in my opinion. They saw a ref ball that game with yeah, a fake as a, foul. As a Lakers fan, I'm glad I'm glad I'm here today. Yeah. A, lot, a lot of Lakers today, in my opinion. Unfortunately, enough for me because it's back to back games against the, the Knicks teams. Anyways, but um, yeah, as as a Lakers fans, uh, as a fan, I'm upset because of that Celtics game. I'm upset because of this win against the Knicks when we almost lost because of that six that six and zero run with the Knicks that almost happened at the end of the game. Like, how do they even catch up with the Lakers at that point? I, I'm just disappointed in all teams hey, altogether. The Knicks in close games is an adventure, bro. It can go <laughs> either one way or another way. And just so. to see them like lose anyway in overtime against a team that's not going to get in the playoffs anymore. In my opinion, I don't think the Lakers stand a chance now to get into the playoffs. I mean, here's the thing with the Lakers. I think I mean I'm going to look at the standings right now. Last I checked, they were 13th, right? Yeah. But the thing is about the West, it's the Nuggets number one, the Grizzlies number two. After that, the three to like 13th seeds where the Lakers are at the bottom, mm-hmm. it's like wide open. I think it's only separated by about five, six, seven games, and we're only in, we've just started February. Mm. So it's still a chance for the Lakers. Obviously, I love the Rui Hachimura trade. I mm-hmm. think he's a, a big wing type player. Listen, the Lakers were overloaded with guards. They were. So you trade out one of them in Kendrick Nunn. Three second round picks. And I know it's it's three picks, but it's second rounders. The, the chances yeah. that those are actually going to convey into something were slim to none. You know, I saw Malik Monk almost post up the craziest dunk ever the other day, and I was just like, wasn't he just a Laker? Like, yeah. what just happened? You man? know what? I think y'all miss him a little bit. A little bit. Right now, I think I do. But then a shooter pulling up that half court shot out of nowhere, I guess he's back. And I'm glad we don't have to pay him for it either because like, he's he's making nothing on a dollar right now playing for the Lakers. Yeah, Dennis Schroeder has <laughs> been a great pickup. And I'm looking at the Western Conference standings right now. I know we started on the Nets, but I definitely want to take a look into this because 
That's an interesting. Yeah. So the Kings are the f- the third seed. Right. Twenty nine, twenty one, five and a half games me. back of first. Now you look all the way down. The Lakers are thirteenth, but they're eleven and a half back. So it's only separated the three seed and the thirteenth seed in the West. Mm-hmm. You think that's a big difference, right? It's only Huge. six games. It's got to be, them. but only six games. Only six games. So the Lakers, if they just play good ball, February, March, April, yeah. LeBron turns it on. Anthony Davis stays healthy. He's, I mean, he's looking nice. Now he's back. See, he got Westbrook. He's having fun now. Westbrook's shooting threes out of nowhere now. <laughs> Westbrook is the X factor, but Anthony Davis, if he just stays healthy, we've seen what we he saw does. him in that whole month. He was cooking. He was without LeBron too. He was killing folks. Yep. If he stays healthy, the Lakers definitely got a chance. I'm not betting against LeBron James. You see, that was the idea. As old been, as he may be, that was the idea. I would have been happy with trading away all those players like Cuz and yeah. Lonzo. That's the idea. I would have been happy with. But ever since that Disney gate, I mean that that Disney like chip, <laughs> I haven't seen anything. Shout out to Disney. Shout out Day to Day Davis. I, I, I make fun of the Lakers, but they're definitely they're playing better basketball. Yeah. They just got. I didn't see this coming. Wins. No, I didn't see them. I didn't see them being the Knicks. That's for sure. I didn't see that coming. Well, you know. Um, but then again, it's the Knicks, so anything can happen. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like, have you seen tips lately? I think there's more and more hair every day. I swear he looks balded by the day. I don't know if it's just me, but he can't. He can't even rock the comb over now. He. he, he I know for a fact he's stressing Knicks fans out. Maybe yep. he's stressing his damn self out too. <laughs> Because the, the decision this man makes, and I know I went on a big rant about it yesterday. I went on a big time rant about Tibbs. Uh, it's my monthly Knicks rant, right? Of course. It's the time this, of month. It's, <laughs> well, it, it, is. it is. As far as the Knicks go, it, like, it, it's, it's that time of the month for me to get frustrated and upset and yelling because it's just the same-ish every single time. Every oh. single game that is close, down the stretch, they're going to find a way to mess it up. Julius Randle's like 0 for 90 in game-winning situations. <laughs> what does Tibbs do? Julius, clear out. <laughs> clear out against Anthony Davis, of all people. <laughs> and, and go try to win the game. And then guess what happened? You didn't even get a shot up. Nope. And then we lost in overtime. So Embarrassing. We'll get to the Knicks in a little bit, but we're going to start with the Nets. Like we mentioned, what is this? Uh, I'm no math whiz, but this is, looks like a 43-point uh, loss. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right, math, actually. That's, that's correct. Yeah. Jeez, 43 I'm, I may go an ass off, but that's correct. Yep. That many points. <laughs> Um, Forty three point loss. I, I just got two Boston. words. Like, wh- what happened? I don't understand what happened. That like just from they had that like couple game stretch where like Kyrie was finally doing his thing as as like the one. Unfortunately, because Katie is gone for a little bit, you had like players standing out and like coming out, although like you know standing out and, and coming in prime p- like time where they need to. Yeah, because Katie's gone. They're stepping up as leaders. And now the Celtics game, it was it was insane. Especially coming off like a Celtics uh, almost barely win against the Lakers. Like the Celtics were not in the best momentum right now. This, this is your best chance as the Nets to get a good win here without KD. And they didn't just they just did not. Capitalize. That's a fact. Listen, the Celtics, as far as they're concerned, they started off the season playing great ball. Mm-hmm. But then ever since you know the last month, they've been like fourteen and 13, 13 and twelve, something like that. Yeah. So even though the Nets are down, Kevin Durant. With the knee injury and Ben Simmons with the knee soreness, not an injury, just no, you know, he's a little sore. It's a little sore. It's like know? he wakes up and it's like I gotta put like some icy hot on it. I gotta let the icy hot sit. <sighs> that, that's Ben Simmons in the morning. He's yep. like, Coach, I can't go. I got knee soreness. What you want me to do? So that that I mean, that's that's that respect him. Of uh, course. I, I don't know if anybody respects Ben Simmons <laughs> at this point, but <laughs> the Nets. You know, with that being said. They're down two important pieces, but yep. you still expect them to put up a fight in Boston. Uh, it's prime time. It's national television, I mean, and they gave us that. I guess we shouldn't like expect Ky- Kyrie to do anything because you know he is in Boston. He's got like a bad reputation over there, very sour taste in his mouth. I mean, remember him stomping on the logo, and then just got swept. Can you <laughs> believe those those Boston fans? I know it's it's disrespectful, yeah, but the lucky curse. How dare you step on lucky? Oh, the luck, like man, stop. <laughs> Yeah, yeah stop. no, Kyrie's definitely got some beef with uh, Boston. I don't think they'll ever end. Uh, and honestly, I think I, I'm on the side with Boston at this point because <laughs> Kyrie did Boston really? dirty. He did. I mean, to to be in the middle, uh, to be like in a team where you just like got traded to, to like be that one guy, and you're already like on the offseason talking about discussing with like KD to like, go to the Nets and, and bring him with you, and it's just like that. It's snaky stuff, you know. So I'm not really sad for Kyrie at all, especially because. I mean, come on, man. They could have both came to the Knicks instead of the Nets. Well, here's the thing about that, because we remember Kevin Durant definitely wanted to join the Knicks. Yeah. But Kyrie was like, nah, man, hold up. Let me me talk to you for a second. (laughs) We can play in New York City, and because we're not with the Knicks and we go to the Nets, we can avoid all the media scrutiny. Yeah. I've been said that. I think about it like that. That's what you think it is? 
Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Think about it. Because the Ben Simmons thing, too. Could you imagine if Ben Simmons was a Nick and he was trying oh, half the stuff he was trying right God. now? Man, listen. Nah, I'd be over for him. Man, listen. We would be, we would be so on his ass, but... You you brought up Kyrie Irving and the the relationship with the Celtics fans. Here's how it sounded at the end of the uh, 43 point blowout, the blowout loss in the Nets, or to the Celtics from the Nets last night. None of the regulars had to play the fourth quarter. Mm. And the only thing left for the Celtic fans to do is an anti Kyrie Irving shoot. All the incense burning or gestures not simmering them down. That's a good point by Doris Burke. Like, remember when he was burning sage up in the TD yep. Garden? I, I I don't think it worked. <laughs> no, I, I don't it did not work. I don't think it worked. I mean, you, you hear this, and, like, you want to feel as if that this gives the Nets momentum when going into the playoffs the same way that the Nets, I mean, the same way the Celtics were giving momentum when the, Cel- the Nets did what they did to the Celtics before. But in my opinion, I don't think the Nets do anything without KD, and it's kind of, like, scary because KD's a little injury prone now. At this point, I think we can could, we could admit that. KD's never going to be the, the same uh, healthy KD he was. He's getting injured every now, like, I think every season at least and uh, those knees are just too small he's too small legs he got bird legs oh. he do got bird legs I mean I, I just need to see more from this ball from this you know this this Nets team uh, I don't know what they do without KD uh, at first I, th- I thought I was seeing it you know when players are stepping up for the role but this big loss definitely affects them huge I don't know it, how they're gonna come back from this one what helps the Nets is that they have a five game homestand coming up but just to recap the game before we get to that so the Celtics obviously they win by 43 points They've won six straight games over the Brooklyn Nets, and that's 10 straight if you count the sweep last season Mm -hmm. in the playoffs. Yep. So there's that. As far as the game, exactly, the Celtics won each quarter. That's hard to do in the NBA. They (laughs) out-rebounded the Nets 57-32. to Wow. That's, again, I'm going to do math again, that's 25 (laughs) more rebounds that they grabbed throughout the course of the game Yeah. more than the Brooklyn Nets. You know, if you remember what we said about the beginning of the season, especially what Mauricio said uh, when he finally got the answer, they need a big man. They still they, they clearly yeah. need a big man. This this proves it. Fifty six more they rebounds. Need, they need some size. Yep. After like fifteen minutes of me trying to get an answer out of him, he finally said it. Yeah, we need some size. <laughs> the investigation <laughs> See, over. I was interrogating that man. <laughs> it was insane. I wish he was here now. I, I, I wish he was too. He would have helped out a lot with just us two talking. Yeah. Right? He would have, you know, took yeah. up like fifteen minutes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> us two knuckles oh, knuckleheads are here. We'll we'll. We'll hold it down for Mauricio. Uh, yeah. You know. Where the heck is everyone, man? This is weird. You know what? I, 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 I <laughs> feel, feel like, so empty in here. You know what? It, it's funny because I'm thinking about it. They were all here today. They were. I saw every <laughs> single one of them today. I saw. I saw Mauricio. I saw Nico. I don't. I didn't see Eric, but I saw Brayden. Right. At school. I, I, I'm School's not, in session. I'm not one to air out people's business, but if, <laughs> I, I mean, if you're all here at one point, <laughs> maybe you should be here at another point for the for the thing you're actually committed to. Nah, but what do I? I think they had a they had a conjoint emergency together. Ah, they had you to think huddle so? together. You think was, so? It was a, they each had someone they had to take Ooh. care of at the same time. I wonder what they could be yep. up to. I think something in Paris or something. I don't know. By the Eiffel Tower. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Beats me. But um, it's not going to schedule. It's going to be crazy, though, huh? Like this five-game home yeah, shit. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely crazy. Definitely crazy stuff going on. Oh, Eiffel man. Tower. Damn. Yep. Yeah. All maybe, the way, all the way maybe. through. Maybe all three of them. They yeah. are the Eiffel Tower. Who knows? We'll see. <laughs> they got the quantity. They got the, they got the, they got the amount correct there. <laughs> Oh man, I'm gonna try to get back to oh, the man. to the game. But actually, no, we covered the game pretty much. The, yeah, the Celtics beat their ass. They did. That's what happened. That's they what beat their ass. They uh, they ate up. Yeah, yummy. Did this game tell us anything? Good. <laughs> we didn't know about the Nets. You think? Um, uh, honestly, no. We've been nah, we, yeah. we saw them getting a little bit of stretch, and we still knew what was up with the Nets. They don't have KD. They have nothing. You know, and then when they have KD, they still need Kyrie. Because look what happened in the playoffs. So it's just all very yeah. strange, in my opinion. They a weird team, ain't they? Yeah. They just they is they is they the most gentrified like oh Williamsburg. That's type that's the reason why, why Kyrie wanted to go to Boston. Like, yeah, to, 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 he wanted like to, Brooklyn. Yeah, you know? yeah, he just wanted to be part of it. He just he wanted to join the hipsters on Atlantic uh, Avenue yeah. and Flatbush and go up to Williamsburg for a Sunday brunch and yeah. you know play Smoothies. at the Barclays Center. Yeah. Everything's nice. Everything's Chick-fil-A. Peachy. Yeah. Well, you know, as Chick-fil-A. far as as far as basketball goes, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, yeah. what my thing is, I feel like and I've said this, they are contenders when all their guys are healthy. Mhm. Contenders. I'm not picking them to come out the East. I'm definitely not picking them to win a championship. They're contenders. Mm-hmm. Now, here's the thing though. When they're all healthy, 
the issue, and we've roasted this man on like ten consecutive weeks. We're on a week uh, that streak with Ben Simmons, but it, he deserves it. I hate to pile on the guy, but the he deserves fact, it. No, he does because <laughs> he he has a hundred seventy seven million dollar contract. It's too much. He was a number one, former number one overall pick. Yep. He, how how tall is he? Go ahead, Josh. How oh, tall is that man? 6'10", 250. Oh, 6'10". Oh, yeah, yeah. nice. That, that's, you know, <laughs> I would like to see when you're that size. Listen, I'm a short king. Yeah, of course. If I was 6'10", and 250 pounds, man, I'm, I'm in the paint every single play. I don't believe anybody <laughs> can stop me. I'm taking advantage of that. Trust that. Trust that. So the, it's, it's weird watching him knowing that he was kind of that player in Philly. Yep. And because he's scared to shoot free throws, and he, he was always scared to take jump shots. But, like, at this point, can we even, like, feel as if, though, if Benson was there helping out Kyrie, it would make any difference? I just don't trust Ben Simmons as a player like that at all. No, no. He doesn't shoot. That's my point. You saw Kyrie screwing him. Shoot! Shoot the ball, Ben! <laughs> ben is such a silly name, too. Ben? ben really? Benjamin. It's Ben for short. Benjamin Button Benjamin. Simmons. <laughs> Insane. <laughs> Benjamin Button because he's regressing. Usually, hey, yep. as you go further <laughs> in your career, <laughs> you progress as a player. He's he gets, regressing he in real he time. He gets worse. He gets worse. I, I don't know. It, it, the fact that he's the X Factor and he's such a head case right now. Yep. That's the guy the Nets are putting their trust in to play off KD and Kyrie, run with the bench unit at times, provide some secondary or not even not even secondary, tertiary scoring. Yep. Just be the third guy. He can't even be that right now. No. You're asking Seth Curry. You're asking he can't be the sixth man. He can't be anything. Nah, I, I don't I don't know what the deal is. And I know he didn't play and it feels like we're piling on, on him, but I think any Nets fan, I, I, there's only ten of y'all, maybe one of y'all yep. listening. What do you do now with him? He's got that big contract. He ain't gonna get traded. Uh, do you cut him? I don't know what happens to him. If I'm the Nets and I'm Sean Marks, I'm trying to trade him. The problem is, who the hell wants Ben Simmons? What, and what Bring could him you back e- to Aussie? Bring him back to Australia. Maybe Send him overseas. What could you even get for Ben Simmons at this point, too? A bag I, of chips, yeah. opened. Open, but still, open. Well, at least no airs in it. But yeah, open, open bag of chips. Just the, not even the full chips. Maybe just like the crumbs at the bottom. Just the crumbs at the bottom. Oh. Yeah, it's like that time where you, like you put the bag in your mouth and like you like you know. <laughs> You funnel it in there. That's, that's what Ben Simmons is. Damn, I was going to say like a pack of like, you know, life New sa- Pulse? Lifesavers. You know, maybe. A pack of New Pulse. There you go. You know what? You know what? <laughs> if I make it, I'm definitely making that trade, Antonio. <laughs> I'm definitely making that trade. <laughs> if I could get, listen, they're expensive right now. <laughs> if I could trade Ben Simmons for them. Come on, man. That's an investment. Ben Simmons won't do anything. Okay. Listen, inflation, that's going to go up. Ben Simmons going to go down. You know what I, I mean? like the, I like the where you're going with this Just right saying. now. I, I, I think you're going somewhere with this. <laughs> As far as the Nets go, their upcoming schedule, they have a five-game homestand, like I mentioned earlier. So it's the Wizards, the Clippers. It's going to be a tough game. The Suns going to be tough if they get Devin Booker back. I'm not sure of the timetable on that. Yeah, he's been that. gone for a while now. Yeah, and the Suns, uh, well, Chris Paul's playing better, but they have did, DeAndre Ayton. Did you see that the um, the Grizzlies clowned the Suns? They were like, uh, no, it was the, sorry, excuse me. It was the Hawks. The Hawks clowned the Suns. Yeah, that was ugly. They said, uh, <laughs> that was ugly. <laughs> That, that was Brings crazy. the lead down to 21. <laughs> <laughs> that social media team. Yo, everyone's social media team is on point nowadays. Everyone's social media team, the Bills, the basketball teams, everyone. It's, it's great to see social media being like alive again. Before it was just yeah. Wendy's. Remember just Wendy's had the social media? Yeah, game? it was just Wendy's. Imagine one fast food chain having social media instead of any other person. Who was Wendy's beefing with? Was it Burger King? Everybody. It? It Burger everybody? King, McDonald's. Oh, they had smoke for Burger they King. They had smoke for Burger King. Big yeah. time. I mean, come on, Burger King. That place sucks, man. The commercials, though. Junior, whopper, whopper, <laughs> whopper, double, junior. Where is Nico when you need him, man? He knows the whole thing. Verbatim. Every Shit, lyric. Man, yo, Nico calling up, man. Yeah, it, it calls up. anything. Anybody call. Anybody call us up. <laughs> 516-572-7440. It is once again WHBC Sports Talk on the Voice of Nassau Community College. 90.3 WHBC. Josh Umahi joined by Antonio Gonzalez. The rest of the crew is uh, in Paris somewhere. Definitely in Paris. Let's by the Apple Tower, I, uh, I heard last. I don't know. Th- that's the rumor spreading around. I checked, right? I checked the location. That's where I said uh, near there. Yeah. Uh, Yikes! That's not what you want. I mean, out of all these games, I know you're probably most, most interested in the one on February 13th against the the Knicks. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I went on the big rant about the Knicks yesterday. I don't know what I have for them today because now, now I just speak for the heart. Mm-hmm. I speak from the heart about the New York of Knicks. But before we get to that, we got a caller on WHBC Sports Talk. Caller, what's up? What's going on, guys? Uh, Eric? Yeah, how's everything going? I, 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 I don't like know. That, it would Where be, are you, It bro? would be better if you was here. Yeah. I, I don't know. You in Paris yeah. right now? What's going on, man? Yeah, Antonio has his theory. I I, I, I'm, I don't know whether they're wrong with it or not. I heard all three of you went to the Eiffel Tower together. Is that true? Who's in Paris? 
Um, you, Mauricio, and Nico, hello? Hmm. By the Eiffel Tower? See, he's hesitating. Uh, I don't know. Mm. Yeah, I don't nah. Know. I heard one is on the left, one's on the right, one's in the middle, in the between mid- the bridge. Hey, have we heard who's in the middle? Who's in the middle? Are you in the middle, Eric? Never. <laughs> Never. Ad- adamant. Adamant. What's up, Eric? What you want to talk about? Yeah, y'all got a two man show today? Yes, man. Yeah. It's legit. Listen. It's just me and Josh. Well, I mean, well, what do I want to talk about? Let's talk about how the Cowboys want to extend that. Oh, my God. All right. Interesting. Uh, let loose on that one, please. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Tell us how you feel about that, Eric. He's pretty mid, in my opinion. He's like Kirk Cousins, but Dallas version. Kirk Cousins with melanin. You know yeah. what? Mm. I'm not mad about it. <laughs> I'm not. All right. Because if you look at the quarterbacks <laughs> in the AFC, no, no go, ahead, go, ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. AFC, right? You look at the quarterbacks in the AFC. Yeah. You got Josh Allen, Joe Burrow, Patrick Mahomes, Trevor Lawrence up and coming. Lamar Jackson. Justin Herbert, Lamar Jackson. Exactly. You know, it's no cakewalk over there. Especially if Aaron Rodgers wants to walk over there. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Makes it easier for Dak Prescott because if you look at the quarterbacks in the NFC, what do you have, Jalen Hurts? He's great. That's, That's it. it. That's it in the NFC. <laughs> Daniel Jones, though, give him some love. You know, he's going to get rather, paid. I'd rather not. Nah, rather not. Why, why not? I hate nah. seeing him on the social media why team. Why not give him the love? I'm sorry, but every time I see him on the Giants Instagram page and I see him doing all these fundraisers for, like, the girls' flag football team and all this stuff, I get more and more sad because I know what's coming. I know what's coming. It's going to be a Dak Prescott-sized contract, and it's going to be all for nothing, just like your damn quarterback. And that's what's going to happen to us. I can already see it coming. Well, don't say all for nothing, right? Uh, he is all for nothing, man. He got no, he threw two interceptions no. in the biggest game of his life, in my opinion. And he just he beat the he beat the Buccaneers. Congrats. Have have enjoy. I'm glad you you sent Tom Brady home crying with his last game of, ever in his career. You see what Jerry Jones said about that win? What did he say? He was like, "I'm proud of that one. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm gonna remember that one. I'm gonna have that one on my well, wall." I mean, he hasn't he had much to be proud of recently, so. I mean, what? It's been 28 years since he's seen him win a big game. Was that a big it's, game? Was though? that really a big game? The Bucks were like what eight or nine? Yeah. No, I'm not saying I'm not saying that game was a big game, but I'm just saying it's it's been a while since he's seen him win in a large like atmosphere uh, where you just have to win. Like if I feel like if they beat the 49ers, like I said, or you know if the Vikings clean up what they have to do, then um, we go to Philly and beat them. I, I'm just saying. What? I'm just saying. <laughs> I think we're we're better built to beat Philly than any team in the NFC. I don't know. In my opinion, I feel as if though it's not just me feeling this way. You got Micah Parsons rooting for the Eagles, a division rival. That's how bad his quarterback is right now. Rooting that's for how, Lane, that's Lane how Johnson, sad he is. Boy, Lane Johnson. He's Lane Johnson, who he plays against on the O line and D line. How do you? I it mean, don't matter. They besties. How is that possible? Yep, no, they're not besties. Kissing his ass. Lane Johnson was over there. He was just. Throwing up emojis and <laughs> stuff like that, you know, you know, when you just get the emoji and, it, and it's just like, all right, he really don't care. Like. <laughs> now, nah, when you talking, to, when you talking to a girl, and all she sends is that emoji. After, and it's like, not a even long like the, the right uh, skin colored one; like it's just a random <laughs> yellow one. That's when you, that's yeah, what Lane like, Johnson did to him. That's what Lane Johnson did to him. You slide up on the DMs and you just you send the whole paragraph like, oh, we should get to know each other. We should go out sometime. And you should get a whole like, yeah, thumbs up, yellow heart. Yellow heart, not even. <laughs> damn. <laughs> no, the 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 not even putting in the effort on the skin color. <laughs> that, that's the, that, right that's what it is. I'm telling you. <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know how you can be excited for Dak Prescott right now, right? Because like, all right, sure, may not be that worried about his contract, but I know you're worried about like Zeke. He says he wants to like to retire in Dallas. He said he take the pay cut. He said he'll, you know, do whatever he's got to take do for his contract. But in my opinion, he's got to leave, right? Because you got Tony Pollard, who I think is like in his last contract, or I mean, his last year he's gonna get franchise tagged, one or the other. But he's gonna go in the free agency, I believe. So, like, you know, as a Cowboy fan, and you, apparently you guys are projected to get B. Robinson. Is it Bajan? Is that how you pronounce his name? B. Yeah, John. B. John Robinson. Yeah, that, that's what they're saying. You're gonna get like that's that's what they're saying. Like they want to get Dak Prescott a weapon, so they have to worry about throwing the ball, so he can't intercept the ball every five times, which he always does, in my opinion. Not in my opinion, just a fact. He missed intercept the ball like crazy. I mean, I don't know what happened this season, but he can't hold on to that ball. He's looking like Danny Dimes out there, in my opinion. Well, I'll put it like this: There's about two to three scenarios the Cowboys can go through, with especially with the running backs. You you go and you sign Pollard or franchise him, right? 
and you still keep Zeke, but he takes a large pay cut and you go and sign somebody, whether it's offensive help or defensive help. You, you take that pay cut and it cuts off some money off the salary cap. Whether you... Now, I, I, I feel like people don't take account for how important Leighton Van Der Esch is for our defense, but those games that he was out, especially that Jacksonville game, where he went out early in that game, it, it showed that you need that middle linebacker there. The Moan Clark isn't going to help because he's not that type of linebacker that's going to run down on the running back. Leighton Van Der Esch gets it done, and he showed it against the 49ers this year and last year as well. He had about 13 tackles last year and I want to say 11 this year. I don't know. Do you remember so, how dominant he was before, though? Like, before, you know, Parsons came in there, that man was that man was Parsons. That man was dominant. No, yeah, he was dominant, but I think that had a, a part to play because Sean Lee was still there, so, mm. you know, he was taking a page out of his book, right? But as far as Tony Pollard goes, you franchise tag him, Zeke takes a pay cut, or if that doesn't happen, you end up cutting Zeke because of, you know, the contract issue, then what you do is you either go draft a running back like you said, Bijan Robinson, if he's there, you take him if he's there. Don't trade up or anything like that. Just take him if he's there because I bet you if he's there, that's the best available player they could take. If what? he's not, Go ahead. you draft a running back in the later rounds, say third round, because there's going to be a stud there no matter what. What's the deal about Zeke? Because do you think he wants to be a cowboy bad enough to take a pay cut? Yeah, he wants if, to retire as a cowboy. Because if they if he doesn't, they could always cut him and then he'd be an unrestricted free agent. So I, I, what do you think his mentality is about that? I think he definitely wants to stay in Dallas. I mean, he, he's this is his home now. I mean, he's been here for seven years now, going on eight. I mean, for him to adjust to a new environment, it's going to take a lot because he's been here since his rookie year. This is just like... It's been his team, but, you know, things are starting to change. So I see, like, the thing with him, he really doesn't want to leave Dallas for the main part that he just does not want to start over. All right, fair enough, fair enough. I, I, I think he definitely wants to be a Cowboy, too. He should remain with the Cowboys. He should take whatever pay cut they want him to take because it's clearly, I mean, you, you got to shift things up. Your production doesn't match your money right now. So you got to broker a deal, stay with Dallas. You love being in Dallas. You love being a Cowboy. You love having the star on your helmet. If, if, it doesn't, if he doesn't, then we know it's going to happen. So, all right. Sad to see, man. Yeah, you know. You know what's sad to see, Eric? You're not here in the seat, yo. Like, where the hell are you, man? We got nobody. Yeah, yeah, Eric. You, I, I just got to ask this question because <laughs> I, I, I've heard from my sources, right? My sources have told me. My sources have informed me that all three of you guys that ain't here right now were here at some point today. So what's the deal? I don't know what's going on. Oh, I wasn't there. I wasn't there at all. Who, who lied to you? No, 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 no. Spill the Eric story. was the only one I didn't see. Uh, I saw Mauricio, right. Braden, and Nico. I thought you, Cyrus. So th- maybe, maybe my source got something against you, Eric. But I definitely, I know the other two were here. The, yeah. All right, we're, we're still investigating. <laughs> No, I was never there. I was on campus, though, and I was never there. You see what? I, you, you were there, then. If you're on campus, you're there. <laughs> I was on campus, but I wasn't there. <laughs> yes, that means you're there, bro. We're on the same premise. Say say you participate in the herbal medicine at the campus, right? And you do it at the radio as well. You're still on the same premise, aren't you? It's both illegal. <laughs> Therefore, you cutting both is still illegal. Like, where are you, bro? <laughs> no, 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 no. See, I, I had class that I had to attend, and I actually seen Mauricio... Oh, uh, shout out to him, I guess. Oh. Right? I seen him, and he didn't recognize me. It is what it is, though. He didn't recognize me. Oh, ain't no way, ain't no way, ain't no way, big time to you. Ain't no way, big league to you. Ain't no way. Yeah, Tony, this is what I'd be talking about. Because <laughs> you do a show of you, he, you do a show with him every week. That's how he didn't recognize you. I'm not understanding. How does that work? Be- because, right, I don't know what it was. He scanned the room. He, like, <laughs> all right, he walked in the classroom, right? He scanned yeah. the room. Like, he spoke to, to the professor. And he scanned the room like three times and looks right past me all three times and did not say a word. Were you going to wave, Eric, or you a, big, you a bigger man? No. <laughs> Damn. There's no excuse. It's just a no. Hey, man. Hey, hey. Beef. Doesn't, doesn't Eric and Mauricio up. actually have a show together besides today? Oh, no. No, no, no. It's just today? No, so maybe that's today, why, because yeah. Eric not really here every Thursday anymore. You're making excuses. Like used to you, be. You're making excuses for this man right now. Who? Mauricio. You uh, gotta recognize Eric. Listen, he's a he's a sweetheart. I don't know, man. I sh- I'm pretty upset about him today, though. I don't know. I saw him today, literally in the. And he acknowledged me too. He gave me a dap. Oh. He gave me a dap this morning. I said, "I'm gonna see you later." He goes, "Yeah." We're, here we are later. 
Mm. Here we are later, no Mauricio. Maybe he had a date that came up. You never know. Why are you making? What, what does that mean? I feel like that was about a joke or something. I don't know. It might be. <laughs> it, might, it might be. I put this man wailing. Yo, Eric, we, we appreciate the call, bro. I, I'm sorry for. Uh, I'm sorry my source didn't uh, represent you correctly. I'll, I'll make sure to but check he, him on No, that. wait, hold on. He was on campus, though. You were correct. Yeah, he, he, he was on he, campus. He, 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 he did see campus. him. I guess, I guess I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. He wasn't at the station. He was, he was over at the other side of campus. It's like I'm, I'm two give blocks him. away. What does that mean? <laughs> I was not that big. The clusters, man. Come on, that's the whole other side. Yeah, you got the be. clusters. Yeah, he, he like the, a, he, like A to D. He in the right place. Yeah, by the library. That's not that far. He in the right place. He's getting his, he's getting his education. That's all we could ask for. That's 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 all we could ask for. You're yeah. right. You in the you, you in black the right. man. Come on. <laughs> you in the right place, bro. Shout out, shout out, February. <laughs> Thanks for the call, bro. We'll see you tomorrow. All right. As always. Thank you. Eric Williams. You can hear him pretty much every day on WHBC Sports Talk. And if you want to join the conversation too. Five one six five seven two seven four four zero. So we we knocked out that part of the investigation. We just got to work. We're wondering about Nico and yeah, the mysterious uh, uh, Mauricio. Nico, now. I'm assuming he's too busy listening to sad music and in his oh, room see, don't alone. Do that. Don't, on his don't TV. do that. Don't do that. We seen Instagram notes. He's been pretty sad lately or something. It's, I don't you know. You know, we go through stuff. It's too long. It's too long now. <sighs> you know, it's been what a month. New year, new me. Nico, come on now. I don't know. You it's know, only Super Bowl Sunday. And he's still posting these sad music. Come on now. It's sports time now. It's time to go. It's time Spe- to act. Speaking of that, you know what makes me sad? What does? He's damn New York Knicks, Uh-oh. man. So you, you see, Uh-oh. See, I, I, I was mad yesterday. I'm going to be sad today because <laughs> here's the deal. They host the Heat tonight at Madison Square Garden, the, the house that they can't protect at all. They can't protect the garden floor for anything. They the seventh seed. They're 27 and 25. They're two games back of the sixth seed. That'd be Miami, who they're playing tonight at 29 and 23. Now here's the interesting subplot because it. the All Star reserves is going to be announced tonight. So in the Eastern Conference, both conferences, but we're looking at the East right now because you got interesting candidates, worthy candidates in my opinion on both these teams. You got Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo from Miami. Yep. And for the Knicks, you got Jalen Brunson and Julius Randle. So I'm I'm a, I'm gonna pitch the question, and I have some stats here to kind of, kind of. How do you feel about that? Why does the All Star really matter like that? I don't know. I've never really been the biggest NBA fan, so I've never understood the All Star game being in the middle of the season, unlike the Pro Bowl being at the end of the whole season. And well, for those you that know, don't make the chip. The, the Pro Bowl is dumb because it should never be at the end of the season, but it has to be because the NFL is in football so like physically demanding. Mm-hmm. You can't just have an All Star game in the middle and all right, all right, back to work. <laughs> So that's why for that. And then the, the All-Star game, I, I kind of like it being where it's at. Uh-huh. In my opinion, maybe. Actually, no, I, I do like where it's at in the schedule. Yeah, and it is weird in the middle of the season. Everyone takes a week off. Should and it be like three quarters in the season? Because like, these players yeah. haven't enough time to really prove themselves. Like, What if like players that are like coming up now a little bit more that are All-Star potentials by, like, say, like, three quarters of the season instead of like, half of the season? I don't know. They should have started playing better early in the you season. You think, like, halfway is enough time for you to be really, yeah, really I, I good? Yeah, I think so. And it's like, I guess it's, it's, a, it's a lot of games. It's different. Yeah. It's, it's like three-fifths through the season, too, okay. I, I think. But I'm kind of I'm stuck on the Brunson-Randall thing. Mm. Because if you look at, and I have their stats here, Jalen Brunson, 23 points per game, three and a half rebounds, six assists, 47% from the floor, 39% from three, 85% from the line. All right, that that's solid stuff. That's best Knicks point guard since <laughs> Stephon Marbury, Mark Jackson, Walt yeah. Clyde Frazier. Shout out Clyde. Shout out Clyde. <laughs> Shout out Clyde. Shout out Clyde. That's big time. That's huge for the Knicks. Yeah. And adversely, you have Julius Randle. Big bounce back season for him. 25 points per game. 11 boards. 4 assists. 46% from the field. 34% from three. 75 from the line. So with that being said... If it came down, I, I don't think they're both going to be all-stars no, just because it's so I'm competitive sad, in the East. And it's kind of sad because I'd rather want Brunson there than Randall. Oh, you think so? I'm just not a fan of Randall. I'd rather see Brunson up there. He's he's up-and-comer. I mean, he's not up-and-comer, okay, but he's new to the team. He's doing exactly what he should be doing. You know, it's sad that he's like not like a complete sensation yet, but it seems like he is. Like He's like that perfect role player. He's like what we needed, in my opinion. And at first, he thought he was going to let us down. And he didn't. He put all of us wrong. And for the better, you know. Yeah, he's more than a role player, too. Yeah. I, I, listen, I thought he was going to be a good Knicks point guard when the signing was made, and mm-hmm. everyone wanted to clown it, saying, oh, Jalen Brunson, you think he's the answer? <laughs> LOL Knicks. But <laughs> you, you, you see what's happened here. He's a good player. Yeah. He's a, a borderline all-star. You know what? I agree with you. And I, I've been trying to put my bias aside, because you know I'm not the biggest Julius Randle guy either. Y- yeah, yeah, but some are. But <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't see how, but... <laughs> 
Brunson, he's been more efficient. He's kind of if you look at the player he's and he's more humble of a guy in my opinion well, he definitely, gets it definitely you know? he, de- he's come in he, he's never complained about anything nope. he's he's the leader of the team he's definitely the leader of the team people want to say Julius Randle's the best player I don't know about that either but Jalen Brunson's unquestionably the leader of the team so when you look at all of that and the impact he's had on this team last year no Jalen Brunson 37-45 record they missed the playoff they missed the play in mm. this season yeah, I know I clown them and I, I laugh at them and not really. I don't clown them. I just cry and and <laughs> you want to laugh about it. I bitch and moan about them. Yeah, <laughs> but there are two games over five hundred. That's a lot different than how it looked last season at this time. Yep. So Jalen Brunson's definitely made that difference. But I know some some people would disagree about that and say, oh, Julius Randle has the better statistical profile, twenty five and eleven. He's bounced back in a big way. Knicks fans, let me know what you think at 516-572-7440. That's the debate, and we'll see when the All-Star Reserves are announced tonight on TNT with uh, Ernie, Shaq, Kenny, and uh, and Chuck. Mm-hmm. They had a good time, right? They are a great time. They, 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 I love Chuck. You love Chuck? Yep. What you love most about Charles Barkley? His size. <laughs> <laughs> He's just really big. <laughs> <laughs> His lack of rings, just both, yeah, he, he, both things. He's a character. He's a funny guy. He's a funny guy. I always yeah. love um, every time Inside the NBA comes on because I, I just remember the the funny moments from that show. Yep. You remember this one? Uh, uh, speaking of common, I want to <laughs> talk about. Whoa! Yo, pause, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. I, mean, I will call it myself. Chuckster, we're live. What are you oh, talking about? Not like we can stop and. Hey, take- that's not what I meant. See, y'all mind in the gutter. Our, our mind's just in the gutter. I, yeah, I, I, our mind's in the gutter. <laughs> he, he, he says the most sus things, and he said, like. The thing about when you're like backing up on a guy and you're going in on them. Oh. What, what, what did he say? Like that was the reason why he said like he's like you know when you're giving when you're giving a guy all that work from behind. Nah, son. <laughs> it, was, it was something like that. <laughs> it was nuts. I was like, what do you mean? There's no other thing you could possibly mean by that. What do you mean by Guaranteed. that? Guaranteed. What, what do you mean by that, Chuck? <laughs> What you mean? I, w- I hope I had that in the vault. I don't I know. You. Uh, you know what I'm talking about, you. right? Yeah. When it, <laughs> I mean, he's banging and banging and banging. When the guy's yeah. banging you. The guy's banging you from the back. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> straight up. <laughs> <laughs> and then he like motioned it. He's like started backing up. Like, the guy's banging you from the back. <laughs> you got to spin off him. You got to spin off him. <laughs> I mean, what, what? What's wrong, guys? what did I say? <laughs> Was it something I said? <laughs> yeah, Chuck is, Chuck is a character. I can't wait to see them on the uh, yeah. inside the NBA tonight when they announce the All-Star Reserves. But... They're going to be a treat, man. Yeah. They're the best part. By far. It's going to be the best part of this night with the Knicks. I, guess, I promise you that. So you think there's a chance... What if there's a chance of, like, neither getting an All-Star? Is there? Is that still a chance? I guess because of Randall's performance, it can't be at this point. But, you know, Knicks get constantly messed up every time, in my opinion. Yeah. The never lottery win. we never win. Hmm. We get a player that goes off for 71 points. Could have been a Nick. You know what? The same season. <laughs> Here's what I have for Julius Randle. I'm gonna give him a little a little message. So you're up against Bam out of bio tonight. Yep. You know what? It's gonna be a tough matchup. It's gonna be mad physical. I think this is what Julius Randle needs to do tonight. Oh, that's not what Draymond's right. doing. Draymond is bracing. Yeah. yeah Draymond and, jo- and Joker instead of going around him, he's just banging and banging and banging. When a guy's banging you, you don't you spin off of him. Those are the worst defenders to play against, actually, because if you can feel their body. Uh, <laughs> Come on. 18 points for Joker. Only. You know what? I, I think it's going to be, you know. He kept going. He felt the silence in the room and the Snickers, <laughs> he did, he and he did. did not care. Out of, out of bounds, it's going to be banging and banging, banging and banging. And banging. And Julius Randle's going to have to spin off and feel his body, you know? That's the worst out of players. When you feel the body all up on you, you know, they're poking you a little bit. Sweat. Yep. <sighs> Down another region. Who knows? <laughs> Cup check. Yep. yep. Magic uh, Johnson. Well, he's not playing anymore. That would have been rough. Banging from the back. Magic Johnson. Uh, that's not, not, what you, not what you want. <laughs> that's not what you want. Not what you want. You got to spin off him immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Get to the trainer. Check you out or something. I don't Yo, know. Antonio. <laughs> what, what, what the Knicks got to do to the protect Knicks, the guard of floor tonight? The Knicks got to gotta stop, slow down Jimmy Butler. I know it wasn't an issue when they played the Lakers. I was just an unfortunate game and always. I don't even know how you. After that Lakers game, how do you like. Say what the Knicks could have done differently. That game was just different. I mean, you had them going a six and zero run to go to overtime, and then they brought to overtime did nothing with it, and they didn't really have an all great performance in general. 
they, they, the Lakers put up a lot of points on them when they're the Lakers. I'm sorry, the Lakers aren't that great. They're not. The, the Knicks, in, here's my issue with that game, and I said this yesterday. Jalen Brunson did everything possible, and we're talking about his all-star candidacy. Yep. He did everything possible for the Knicks to win that game. He scored six straight points to tie it up. He took the charge on AD. That set up the the last play of four seconds left. I don't know what hell Tibbs was drawing on that whiteboard. He was just drawing like stick figures and <laughs> writing up dinner plans and journaling, oh, yeah, writing picture, in a diary. Probably a picture of his therapist <laughs> for, for happy family that he doesn't have. Yeah. Oh no, no wife, no kids. His, oh, no. You know what? Here's my thing about Tibbs because his life is basketball, right? <laughs> yeah. His entire life is you would basketball. think that he'd be good at it, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you would think if that's in your entire life, that's what you wake up living, breathe. Yep. You would be better at coaching the New York Knicks. Yep. You know what I mean? But but you know, at least he didn't like live and breathe one thing every day of his life, make it his whole personality, and then leave forever and never come back. You know what I mean? At least he didn't do that. <laughs> that that would have been crazy if Tibbs did that. That would have been wild. <laughs> <laughs> been crazy. Some people do do that. I, no, are you serious? I, I, yeah. I can never see someone doing that. Really? I, I don't know. I, I've, I've come across some people. I just don't know, man. It's it definitely questionable behavior. It's definitely hey, questionable. Listen, you know, I guess not anything's possible. Anything's you know, possible. I, 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 yeah, when people make their job their personality trait, it's not what you want. It's rough. It's just not. It always ends badly. So, yeah, maybe if the Knicks slow down Jimmy Butler. Um, like you know, oftentimes they have superstars just perform. Cr- I mean, you've seen it before, right? especially when they're at the Garden. Forget about it, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Luca. You got Pascal Siakam. You got all these guys just coming to the Garden, put on the show, the garden, putting on the show. They love it there. People love playing at the Garden, not the Knicks though. No, 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 no. Not, the, not the Knicks. No, no, no. I, I think they <laughs> the, love playing the opposition. There. There's just too much pressure <laughs> because I don't know what it is. It's the bright lights of the Garden, but every single time, like the Knicks will play well for the first couple quarters. Yep. When it comes down late in game, you know they're gonna crumble. The whole league knows they're gonna crumble. The whole watching audience knows they're gonna crumble. The other team knows they're gonna crumble. The other coach knows they're gonna crumble. Tibbs knows they're gonna the, crumble. The entire world knows they're gonna crumble. Tibbs knows it too. He's just like, oh man, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, try, to, I'm gonna try to prevent it today. Hey. To the floor. You got it. Hey, Jew. Hey, Jew. Iso, cook his ass. <laughs> he runs the cook his ass offense. I'm tired of it. Cook his ass, Jew. Cook him. Cook him. Oh, no, no. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not what we wanted, Jew. That's, that's a bad abbreviation. You got to watch out, Kyrie Irving. That's a bad abbreviation. You got to say Randall or Rand or something. Not just... Anyways. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, Julius. Julius. Cook his ass, Julius. Cook him. Uh, RJ Barrett's comments on. <laughs> so he was benched in the Lakers game in the fourth quarter. Of course quarter. he was. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. sucks. <laughs> that man sucks. He stinks. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> He's averaging 20 points a game. No, I don't care. <laughs> I hate him. Career high, in, career high in points is the third option. Listen, I know we expect so much out of him. And sure, it's unreasonable at times. Okay? But he's a sorry individual. Uh, I don't care. You can send his ass back to Canada. You sound like Mauricio with the agenda against Canadians. That's what you sound like right <laughs> that now. That was weird. I don't. That was. Yeah, but I guess it just sound like that. But I don't mean to. I just. I just personally, I feel as if though RJ Barrett should have been showing something by now, especially when you got R. When you got Brunson and Randall doing what they're doing right now. Why isn't RJ Barrett like really putting on a show just like with them? Like well, he has help now. He doesn't have to be that guy. Nah. You know, Ren- Randall is back. You know what I mean? Archibald doesn't have to hold on to all that pressure because, I mean, you saw him last season. And even, like, in a little bit of this season, he was cooking for some reason, like, random games. Yeah. He has it in him, but he doesn't have to do that. He can just be, like, decently good. Listen. And he's getting benched in the fourth quarter now against the Lakers? Yeah. The not, Lakers? not what you want. Here's my thing. Because R.J. Barrett, again, 20 points per game as a third option on a team is nothing to sneeze at, right? No. But. This is what I tell Knicks fans because the same Knicks fans that will say, oh, R.J. Barrett's doing what he's doing as a third option are the same ones that's going to say they're the seventh seed right now. They're not better than the Cavs, Bucks, Nets, Celtics. Not it's better than any teams. of Yeah, they're not better than the six teams they're behind right now. So they're about where we expected them to be. But again, not don't look at the destination. Look at the journey. Look at how we've gotten here because it's mad and consistent play from the mid three. It's been Tibbs blowing game after game after game. And yeah, you're 27 and 25, but the Knicks haven't even played the hard part of the schedule yet. No. Because hold up. They, they, after tonight, and my, the Heat's going to be a big test tonight. It will be. They're, they're heating up now. Yeah. Like the first Heat was trash. Now they're not a Yeah, game. They, they for sure heating up. And then you have the Clippers heating up too. <laughs> That's funny though. The Clippers. You, yeah. <laughs> Uh-huh. They even uh, 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 uh. Good old Kawhi Leonard coming in the garden. Yep. After that, you do have the Embiid and Harden 76ers. They're, they're playing damn good basketball right now. 
After that, you go to Orlando, face Philly again. You play the Jazz at the Garden. And you might wonder why I put the Jazz at the Garden on the topic sheet. Why? Who cares about the Jazz? Yeah. I want to blow them out by 40. Really? Because they wanted to play hardball with the Knicks. You know, every time the Knicks <laughs> try to make a trade, it's the Knicks tax. You got to give us more because you're from New York. You should have a, a consistent winner because how do you not have a consistent winner in New York City? He's yep. the biggest market in the world. Yep. So we're going to tax you. We need, no. If you want Donovan Mitchell, we want R.J. Bear, Obi Toppin, Quentin Grimes. We need five first-round picks. Obi was all crazy. Bad. I'm not going to lie. Like, you, you, they knew how much we loved Obi. Come on. That was never going to happen. They, they wanted and to. And Quentin, too, they said. They wanted to violate. They wanted to just fleece yeah. us. And Danny Ainge, he was like, all right, I'll take Laurie Markin instead. Colin <laughs> Sexton, you know, come on down to Utah, bro. You know, That's we'll, we'll see, we'll see they, what we can do. They gave us a discount compared to us. Because. It, that's what I'm talking about. The Knicks <laughs> tax. It's disgusting. <laughs> we can't make a deal with anybody. This OG Ananobi stuff, the, they want three first round picks from the Knicks? <laughs> nah, I like OG Ananobi, but who the hell is OG Ananobi? Three first round three picks. Three first round, round picks? I mean, we're not, the, they're probably not going to be for, for good first round picks because that's, that's not us. That's not how we roll. If but still. If they're all protected picks, I'm actually with it. If you can get a guy like Gary Trent Jr., too, another solid player. But if it's just three picks for OG and Nobi straight up, you're tripping. But that's the next tax I'm talking about. Every team just wants to fleece us. Yep. We're, 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 we're like the. Um, and also, like at, at this point, can we, can we even trade if we're going to give away players as well? We have so many young players for no reason now at this point. We we know guys like <laughs> listen. We know like quickly isn't going to be a guy for us. We, we can get rid of him. No, I, I do like quickly. I, like I, quickly? I, I think quickly. It, it's funny because I'm thinking about who is the more or the most valuable prospect between quickly Grimes and Toppin. I, yeah. I'll run quickly first. Really? Yeah, I, I, he's impressed. I haven't me. seen much from Toppin as uh, recent. I see more quickly, you know, unfortunately. Rand- Tibbs would rather play Randall forty <laughs> minutes a game. <laughs> Then give Obi Toppin an opportunity to like do what he does best, like run the floor, dunk, yep. make game changing plays. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't understand what it is, but that's the story with the New York Knicks. We'll see what they can do tonight. And like I said, the Jazz. Hopefully, they beat them by forty. They won't. They'll probably get. They'll probably lose to a Laurie Markin and Masterclass and uh, Malik Beasley Masterclass and. This kid Walker Kessler, he's a new Rudy Gobert over there. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll see what happens. They played the Nets Gobert on February 13th. So though. garbage. Yeah, Rudy Gobert is really embarrassing. You know he didn't play last night, and they, the Timberwolves look better without him because they just beat the Warriors in Minnesota last night. I don't know what that's well, like about. Minnesota. But Minnesota. 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 Shout out Joe Biden. Shout out Joe Biden. Joe Biden. Joe Biden. I see they, you got something going on in the back of your sheet here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we'll get to what's next in a second but let me just say the next play the nets on february 13th so i'm gonna be out that now i'll be having a little romantic time you That's know cute. yeah pre-valentine's wait, wait, day the, the 13th right yeah so you oh, know nice. uh, th- i think the 13th is on a monday yeah you nice. know t- it'll carry over into tuesday hopefully we do something valentine's night but uh, nice. honestly hopefully that, should the Knicks and nets, that should be enough yeah hopefully the Knicks and nets don't ruin my valentine's day they just might they, they the, it's the very Knicks risky just might. very risky to do that but maybe it should help, me, help you feel better the next day you know well, hopefully that's all I can hope for him as a man. As a, <laughs> as a man. Shout out Charles Barkley. You, you know what I mean? Like as, as a man. <laughs> Tom Brady. We're going to bang from the back like that. You're just going to hope as a man that, you know, <laughs> it gets better the next day. Spin off of him. You got to spin off of him. Feel their body. Feel their body. Uh, Tom Brady. So, uh, I don't know if you heard he retired. Uh, I think somebody said that. Yeah. yeah. H- him and, and um, what's his name? Ozzy Osbourne. Oh really? Same day. Huh. Well, Ozzy Osbourne's done touring, so uh, in a way he retired. See, why does Tom Brady get all the fanfare, but Ozzy Osbourne gets swept under the rug? Now I, I don't, I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like that. I don't, I'm not. A, I'm not. He's doing a lot of people. Yeah. Huh. Even even a certain group of people as well. Ah. For a certain month. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But listen, Tom Brady can do Tom Brady. Um, people are still like not so sure if they could believe him. They're saying that like I'll believe it when I see it. You know, he's coming for the third uh, retirement speech soon. But Tom Brady knows he can't do this a third time. Like, come on, you, you got two chances and that's it. You should only get one, in my opinion. The only way Tom Brady gets un out of retirement is if he gets a year of break. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. My opinion, I feel as if he's gonna go to commentating, and I'm sorry, but he's gonna suck. He's gonna suck terribly at commentating. 
And I think it's going to You be, think so? It's going to be because he earns so much money for it without being, you know, an actual like proven member of the commentator cuz like you look at guys like um like for example, this year Greg Olson has done amazing things in the booth like you think just so? recently. I think he's been really good. The guys yesterday disagree with that. He like Greg he's, Olson? He's mid. They say he's what? mid. I, I don't know about that. I, I thought don't know. he's like, I think he's job. pretty good. Yeah. I mean, he's not Tony Romo, but he looks Tony Romo as well. He's not going to pay as much as Tom Brady's going to pay now. Why Tom Brady? I understand Tom Brady's going to have all these stories about like um you know the the people on the field and the people's dads on the field because he's so old and like talk about like no one no one else is the life Tom Brady has. But is that really going to be enough? Like, what if he's really bad at commentating? What if what if he really like just like you know just messes up the like poops the bed in my opinion? Like, what if he's that bad? You know, Tom Brady is the kind of guy I know I hate on him because he's, you know... He's he, the worst. He threw away his marriage for eight and nine seasons. Yeah. And I know some people want to say that, you know, it, maybe there's something deeper in the marriage. I mean, we all saw the jujitsu guy rumor. That, I'm sorry, but, like, that's not even a rumor. That's just a fact. Like, that's a fact. She went with them afterwards as well. Uh, like, after the divorce was clear, the day... The, the ink was still drying, and she's damn, on vacation the, with them. The day after... <laughs> That's crazy. Nah, that's crazy. No, nah, like, it came out the same day after. Like, pictures of her and the jujitsu guy. She couldn't wait. Yeah. She couldn't give him the courtesy. Did you, did you hear that? I mean, I don't know how true this is because I think it's a bit silly because, like, Giselle makes just as much money as he does, if not more. Oh, yeah. But people yeah. are saying that he, re- he, like, retired after the divorce was finalized so that she wouldn't get any of his commentating money. <laughs> that's what people are saying. People are saying <laughs> that, like, now that he, the divorce is finalized, she won't get any of that $150 million contract. Ooh, I didn't even think about that. You know what? <laughs> Tom, my boy. So maybe that's why he really unretired. Tom, my boy, you might be playing chess. You might just so, be playing chess. It's true. She won't see any of that money. You, you're not seeing that Does yet? she need it? I don't know. But still, she, she something. Doesn't. People don't really realize because it's they need American to be familiar football. with Giselle's game. <laughs> They're not. They're really not. I mean, I'm really they not either. They got a like Shaq. They got a like Shaq out here. Uh, I don't know. When it comes to models, I'm not really familiar for game either. I wasn't familiar either. I nah. thought it was just Gal Gadot and nobody else or like maybe like a, a model like that, like one of the Jenners. But apparently Giselle is, is that woman. She's just that person. She's him. Straight up. And in, in the modeling game, I don't know why. You know, in my opinion, she... Yeah. I, I don't want to say it, but she's like... She's not my type, bro. I don't... She's just... Know. Nothing really wows me about her, in my opinion, but... um. Yeah, that that's what the whole situation is there. Like people keep saying about how like Brady is really gonna, re- I'm not gonna retire on like a sad note like that. But is anyone gonna really look at that game and be like, oh, remember that time he like lost to the Cowboys in the playoffs and then retired? Like they're not gonna think about that. I mean, at first thought they were gonna think about that when he lost to like um, as a Patriots, like he he got that loss. Is it against the Rams? No, not the Rams. It can't be against the Rams. The but last year as a Patriot? Yeah. The Titans. The Titans. You see? He lost the game against the Titans in the playoffs. Everyone said, oh, man, he's going to retire sad now. And that was a big thing. And it's the same thing going on here when like he's going to go again. He's gonna go sad against like the Cowboys, and that's it. But, I mean, does anyone really care? He's Tom Brady. No one has the resume he has, unfortunately. And I, as much as I hate him, I got to admit it. No one's going to ever be like Tom Brady. I mean, people are saying that Mahomes could possibly catch up, but yeah. that's not true. I don't think so. See, he could Mahomes could catch up in the stat category. And yeah. he could catch him definitely because I, I saw first take talking about this. It was Stephen A., Chris Russo, Mad Dog, and Mike Francesa. Yeah. They had a little cute reunion. It was it was fun. It's very yeah, yeah, crew. inspirational, inspirational. Yeah. But here's what they said. They they were saying like Tom Brady, we look at him as the GOAT, right? Yep. And he did it for he had the longevity factor. Yep. But was he really when you talk about the GOAT? Was he really, like, the most talented, like, awe-inspiring quarterback you ever saw play? I mean, they're saying he is because he's got a Hall of Fame resume in three of his decades he's done life in. But that's what I'm saying, the longevity. Now, people I mean, want to bring up Aaron Rodgers. People want to bring up mm, Mahomes and Peyton Manning. You know, I heard this insane thing the other day. I mean, today, actually. I heard that if Mahomes got the Super Bowl, is he now better than Aaron Rodgers at this point in his career? Oh, yeah, he is. He is? He is? Yeah, it's me. Wow. Yeah, Aaron Rod- Aaron- I didn't know if that was a hot take or not. You really think he is? I, I think when you look at the first five years of a quarterback's career, Mahomes, if it's already that way, but if he wins the Super Bowl this year and he has two and he's been to three, and Rodgers had all this time with, you know, number one offenses, number one defenses, whatever you want to call it, and he did uplift some teams. I'm not yep. going to say that. He didn't. But Mahomes is he's that guy to me. I, if you take pound for pound, Mahomes at his best so far in these yep. five years, and Rodgers, give me Mahomes. Wow, give me Mahomes. I guess I can't really debate with you on that one. I mean, 
I it, want it's, it's tough though because I was arguing with him. I was like, Aaron Rodgers has had some tough games and NFC Championships that weren't his fault. Like he played really well. He played really well in those yeah. games. The guy against that the had Giants, the, the ball bounce off his face mask exactly. you know, on the onside kick against in the 49ers. Yeah, he had, oh. his defense let Raheem Mostert run like what 200 all-purpose yards on on like their defense. Yeah, sick work. Sick work. That's yeah, disgusting. Sick work. It's nasty. So I can't really. I don't really know if I can blame Aaron Rodgers for not winning as many NFC championships as Mahomes won AFC championships, because some of those games weren't his fault. Like, can Mahomes really do a hello Mary to like anybody or like tiptoe passes in the in the very moment? I mean, I guess he could, but it had to be like sideways throw, random leap. Like, I, <laughs> I feel like I don't know. I'm on the, I'm on the side where I think the NFL like really just does love Mahomes way too much in my opinion. I mean, oh, they be slurping him up. That's they a be, fact. they slurp up like slurp juice. Like it's crazy. Like it, they give him crazy work. Like in the bedroom to Mahomes like, all the time. Like they they put him everywhere. So I don't know. I, I guess like I guess it makes sense why you could say he's better than Aaron Rodgers. The Super Bowls is really a, a, a big factor about it because I mean he's got five. Like he's that's Tom Brady stats like his mm-hmm. first few years getting Super Bowl rings. Mahomes. Here's the thing with Tom Brady, and you want to talk about will his resume ever be touched? I okay. So is anybody winning seven Super Bowls as a star starting quarterback, being that guy for their entire career? I don't think so. No, because now the the salaries won't won't be that way. There's yeah. not gonna be a quarterback now that's gonna take the pay cut like Tom Brady did. That's he's true. Just a weirdo. Yeah, he, he did take a lot of. Well, yeah. you, you're married to the supermodel wife. I guess yeah, that makes that's sense. Why, yeah. yeah, but when it comes down to. St- that I think Mahomes has a shot. I don't know if Mahomes wants to play until he's forty six. That's the thing Yo, too. Pe- Does any quarterback that's a star right now really want to play until forty six years old? I heard the opposite. Old? I heard that like now players could last longer than ever. That's true. Look at LeBron James. He's paying so much money on his own body, and players are gonna players are gonna have more and more access to technology like that by the years go. And so like that's a great point. What would really be what would really be the craziest thing if a quarterback who plays a position of like nowadays you can't even touch a quarterback without getting a penalty? That's a good point too. But so that's what point. I'm saying. I feel like like Mahomes, who, um, but then again, Mahomes is starting to get injuries earlier in his life. Like he like is getting bad sprained ankles. You know what I mean? I mean, I guess nothing serious. No torn ACLs just yet. But the moment he does, then that takes a real big career. I mean, a real big hit off his like career longevity. That's a good point. It's not like he's completely ducked injuries. Yeah, that, that's a good point. But you're right about the the longevity factor because we've seen it in the NBA. I mean, mm-hmm. LeBron, Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, they're all 34, 35, and up. LeBron's 38, and they're all at the top of their game. He had guys come back from not just one, but two catastrophic injuries in Klay Thompson. Yep. I know basketball is a very different sport, but still, as a quarterback, you're not going to get touched as much as you used to back in like the 80s or the 90s. You're going to get no Sean Taylor down your throat. You yeah. know what I mean? There's no Sean Taylors. There's no Ryan Clarks. Ryan Clark used to smack people on the field. <laughs> people don't recognize. Troy Palomalu. Yep. There's no guys that really like that anymore. Patrick and Willis. Shake your hand afterwards. Yeah, like good game. Good Eric game, my Reed. boy. Ooh, Eric Reed. So, in my opinion, I don't see how Mahomes can't last as long as Tom Brady, or even longer. There's no Cam Chancellors in the game. Oof. There's no Earl Thomas. It wasn't nice. Oh, Earl Thomas is, uh, I don't know. I don't know how I feel I about don't, him. It's hard based yeah. on how he ended his career. Yeah. He was really nice in Seattle, though. Yo, could you imagine his face when he got the script for how his career was going to end? <laughs> could, you, could you imagine his face? Oh, my God. He I got to like, do what? He was like, wait, what's going to happen at the end? I like the beginning part, but yeah. the Ravens? <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know. Then that stuff of his brother, the you know, he had a little. They know, went to they went to Eiffel Tower. Yeah, we were, talk, we're talking about we Nico, go. Eric, Mauricio, Eiffel yep. Tower. They, they actually Earl Thomas. They actually yeah. were in Paris. Yep. They they did for it. sure. They, they did it. They got it done. Yep. The wife almost killed him. The wife almost killed a man. <laughs> That's crazy. I have to a professional football player. Sheesh. That's nuts. Earl, Earl, Earl. Shout out to Earl Thomas, man. You got to stay solid, bro. What a player. Remember on the way out, he got like he Derrick Henry turned him into a lead blocker with the stiff arm. Oh my god! He turned them completely him around. <laughs> Doing crazy work. All I remember is uh, yeah. is is he was he was like uh, on the stretcher on his last Seahawks game. He was flipping off everybody. Ah uh, yeah. Well, how do you do that? How do you do it when the, the, the same staff is going to help you like you know off the field? He was like, him off. He was like nah, <laughs> nah. Was he home too? <laughs> this is crazy. Look, I, I don't, I don't want, I don't want the, I don't want the fake love. I don't want the love you're showing me right now. Before we get out of here, I want to go through some quick rumors and then we'll, uh, we'll wrap up. Uh, so the Knicks, they're in on Zach Levine, OG Ananobi, guys like that. Would you be f- in favor of a Levine trade or no? Uh, I mean, def- definitely past his prime, I would assume. But 
Why not? Why not do anything at this point for the Knicks? Please, anything. We'll do. Any- I'll do anything. Please. Who do we give up though? That's the question. I have no idea. Hey, they have like a million first round picks. They have some young players. They can't keep all of them. They can't of- keep all these young players. They no, can't. They're, they're not gonna have to, to pay them eventually. Yep. We'll see what happens. Oh uh, yeah, fun today, Antonio. Great, just you and me. Hold the fort down. Yeah, somebody got to do it. Hey, stay tuned for that basketball game, right? Yeah, so me and Gina Halstead will be on the call for the Nassau Lions and women's and men. Big, big night tonight. Huge. It's against Suffolk, the Suffolk Sharks. Yes. Should should stomp them out. Stomp them. I don't, I don't want to see any shenanigans. I want to see a clean. Yet? Or no? They did, they did. They stomped they them out. They stomped them out, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I was in there Suffolk last too. time. Yeah, so. Yeah, that was, was a rough. Not what you want. Nah. Nassau should get it done. And as for the show that's up next, stay tuned for Perfumi Detalia. Coming up for an hour, but for now, for WHBC Sports Talk, we will call it a show. From Antonio Gonzalez, I am Joshua Yamahi, thanking you once again for listening to the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC.